You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. So the Fallout franchise has seen a number of different currencies. We've seen the NCR dollar, the Legion Denarius, pre-war money, and in Fallout Tactics, we even saw ring pull tabs from soda cans being used as a form of currency. However, the most famous currency in the Fallout franchise is the bottle cap. It was originally introduced in Fallout 1 and returned in full force when Bethesda made it the in-game currency for Fallout 3. Now, in Fallout 1, I think it made a lot of sense to use bottle caps, since they were at least backed by a valuable commodity, specifically pure water. However, due to some of the more recent events in Fallout 3, New Vegas, and Fallout 4, it seems like it would be a good idea to finally adopt a new type of currency in the wasteland and abandon bottle caps. So today, I want to discuss why I think bottle caps as a currency in the more recent Fallout games is flawed. So, I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and discuss bottle caps and their origins. The story goes that bottle caps were first adopted by hub merchants in New California on the West Coast. Bottle caps were originally backed by water because pure water was a commodity that everyone in the wasteland wanted and could agree was valuable. Pure water was, and largely still is, in relatively scarce supply in some parts of the post-war United States though it is seemingly not in scarce supply in other parts, but we'll discuss that later on. The other reason that the hub merchants chose bottle caps was because much of the technology that was used to create bottle caps was either destroyed or lost during the Great War. In Fallout New Vegas, Alice McClaverty says that there are several factors that determine whether a bottle cap is genuine or not. More precisely, the technology to paint the labels, the general machining, and type of metal used can prove to be difficult to replicate. On the one hand, while it's probably possible to fill one or two of these specific requirements, particularly when it comes to sourcing the steel and forming it into the proper shape, the most difficult aspect would be finding the paint technology that was used before the war to create the bottle caps. Ultimately, the idea was that the vast majority of the genuine bottle caps were already made by the various pre-war beverage corporations like Nuka-Cola, Sunsets Arsparilla, and some beer manufacturers. Because the number of bottle caps is limited, this protects the bottle cap against inflation, and since no one has the ability to print more bottle caps, this makes them more stable as a currency. Over time, and according to the lore, Fallout 2 replaced bottle caps with NCR dollars, which was originally backed by gold instead of water. Now, the NCR dollar was the dominant currency until the West Coast Brotherhood of Steel destroyed the NCR's gold reserves sometime after Fallout 2 and before Fallout New Vegas. In response, the NCR made the NCR dollar a fiat currency, which ultimately allowed for bottle caps to be reintroduced its currency as NCR citizens had less faith in the NCR dollar than they did in the bottle caps that were backed by the hub merchants and pure water. Something else that's interesting to mention is that it used to be that Nuka-Cola bottle caps were the only bottle caps that could be used as currency. However, New Vegas introduced Sunset Sarsaparilla, which when consumed also yields bottle caps that could be used by the player as money. Fallout 4 expanded on this somewhat, as if the player drinks beer like Gwyneth Stout or Gwyneth Pale Ale, you will also receive bottle caps which can be spent at the game's various vendors. The general concept is that bottle caps exist in a currently finite supply where no more can be made. This protects them against inflation or quote-unquote overprinting, which would undermine their value as a currency. Alright, so now I want to talk about the various problems with using bottle caps as currency. The first issue is that the materials that make up a bottle cap don't have very much inherent value. Bottle caps are primarily made from steel, which is both one of the most common and least valuable crafting components in Fallout 4. Since I'm pretty sure banks aren't really a thing in the post-apocalypse, whatever currency you use will typically have to have some kind of inherent value. One of the reasons that gold, silver, and other precious metals were used in coins throughout history was because gold, silver, and other precious metals by themselves are valuable resources. Not only do gold and silver make great jewelry, 
but they are also used in the manufacturing of energy weapons and night vision scopes, respectively. As for bottle caps, what can you make out of bottle caps? Of course, the problem with having all of your currency being gold and silver coins is that gold and silver are inherently scarce resources, and both of these materials are heavy in large quantities. Now, the argument could be made that bottle caps could be used to trade gold and silver without actually carrying those specific resources around. As mentioned previously, pure water is a valuable and scarce resource on the west coast, and the problem with trading water is it is extremely heavy in large quantities. Not to mention that water can be difficult to transport. Thus, bottle caps were used and devised as a means of trading pure water without transporting vast amounts of it all the time. Bottle caps were successful because all hub traders agreed that bottle caps had value and could be exchanged for a certain portion of water somewhere at the hub. However, I think there is an issue with this for games that take place on the East Coast. In Fallout 3, the Lone Wanderer assists the Rivet City Doctors along with the Brotherhood of Steel in Project Purity, where they gain the means of mass producing pure water. Brotherhood soldiers can eventually be seen escorting caravans, shipping purified water to settlements for free. At that point, pure water loses its commodity status and thus can't be used to back bottle caps as a currency. In Fallout 4, any settlement owner with the proper resources and technical know-how can build their very own water purifiers, both on land and near bodies of water such as small ponds, lakes, and even near the ocean if they choose to. So on the one hand, while pure water was scarce initially, it seems like it's common enough now that most people can access it on the east coast. So given that bottle caps are made from steel, which isn't inherently valuable on its own, and because everyone and their brother has access to pure water on the east coast, whether that's through Project Purity or their own industrial water purifiers that they've built, how can you use purified water to back a currency? especially in the capital wasteland where anyone can literally drink from the Potomac River. Now, you could argue that bottle caps are still valuable because they are scarce in the sense that no one seemingly has the ability to reproduce them. Or so we thought. For those of you that have played Fallout New Vegas, it becomes evident that the merchants are backing the value of the bottle cap. When you're able to speak with Alice McClaverty, she reveals some interesting things about bottle caps. Alice sends the courier on a mission called Pressing Matters, which consists of you traveling to a Sunset Sarsaparilla plant to quote-unquote decommission or destroy a bottle cap press in the factory. She also admits something interesting when asked by the courier if new bottle caps are ever made. She says, and I quote, Certainly, bottle caps do wear out or get damaged. Some people even insist on using bottle caps in explosive devices for some reason. We make it a point to scour pre-war bottling plants and recover or disable the bottle cap presses. It seems we missed one. This line of dialogue essentially confirms that bottle caps can still be made and are made as the existing supply of pre-war bottle caps degrades over time. The other important thing to note is that merchants make it a priority to scour pre-war bottling plants and recover or disable the bottle cap presses. After all, if more bottle caps are made, it undermines the value of the current bottle caps that everyone is using. If just anyone can randomly find a bottle cap press out in the wastes, what's stopping them from obtaining a bunch of steel and printing a bunch of new bottle caps to use for trading? How are the various merchant hotspots throughout the wasteland going to be able to regulate that? So as we've established, bottle caps are actually artificially scarce, and the means to produce more do exist and are employed by traders on the west coast to help regulate the value of the currency. It stands to reason that bottle cap presses also exist on the east coast of the United States as well. After all, Fallout 3 features a Nuka-Cola bottling plant, and Fallout 4 also features a Nuka-Cola bottling plant that was revealed with the Nuka World DLC. In Fallout 3, it's possible to manufacture a few Nuka-Cola quantum beverages by accessing the packing computer located on the plant's factory floor. While the plant jams afterwards, who's to say that a technologically proficient faction couldn't come along, fix the assembly line, and manufacture more bottle caps? The same thing goes for Nuka World's bottling plant in Fallout 4. 
While the area is also populated with Nuka Lurks, assuming the sole survivor clears the plan out, it seems like they would have the ability to manufacture as much Nuka Cola and also as many bottle caps as they want. In both of these cases, what's stopping anyone from just activating the bottle cap press at either of these production facilities? From what we know, both areas are infested with Nuka Lurks and haven't been cleared out until the Lone Wanderer or Soul Survivor get there. Assuming the Raiders of Nuka World or the Minutemen of the Commonwealth got access to a bottle cap press at one of these facilities, that would make them insanely powerful. While it's certainly a lesser case, there is also the case of the Protectron robot named Buddy. He was developed pre-war as a means of quickly brewing beer within a few days as opposed to the regular month-long brewing times. It's possible that there is technology in Buddy to both produce the glass bottles as well as the bottle caps required to store the beer. If Buddy is producing his own Gwinnett branded bottle caps, it seems reasonable that somebody could take Buddy apart and learn how the press mechanism works. That way, they could manufacture their own bottle caps on a massive scale. There's also the case for bottle cap mines. In Fallout 4, bottle caps aren't actually needed to make bottle cap mines. Yet, when you explode a bottle cap mine, it yields bottle caps. So what you've got here is a currency that can be reproduced and is of no inherent value by itself. It seems likely that a bottling plant would have a bottle cap press on the East Coast, as you can decommission a bottle cap press at the Sunset Sarsaparilla plant as a means of keeping the bottle cap currency stable. We also know that the Drinking Buddy Protectron you can find in the Shamrock Tap House in Fallout 4 will brew beer that the player can drink and receive bottle caps for doing so. How is a bottle cap valuable if it isn't backed by a specific resource like pure water, gold, or silver? Even if bottle caps are backed by a valuable resource, how do the bottle caps themselves maintain any value if the player can just drink a bunch of beer thanks to Buddy or reactivate a bottle cap press at Nuka World? Or you could just make bottle cap mines and you get bottle caps for free. Now I guess to be fair, the fact is that we don't really know much about Fallout 3 or 4's currency, and it's never really explained within either game's lore. The only real reason Fallout 3 and 4 seem to use bottle caps is because the original Fallout used bottle caps. However, in the original Fallout, bottle caps were valuable because they couldn't be manufactured, and new bottle caps were only introduced to the economy whenever someone opened and drank a pre-war beverage like new Coca-Cola, or when someone randomly found a pre-war bottle cap in a trash can. On the one hand, we could assume that Fallout 3 and 4's bottle caps are backed by water like they were in previous entries. The problem with that though is that anyone can build a water purifier in the Commonwealth with the proper resources. In the Capital Wasteland, the Rivet City scientists and the Brotherhood of Steel managed to purify the water in the area thanks to Project Purity. Even Deacon confirms this by saying that it's possible to drink the water there. This leaves merchants as the only entity that's backing bottle caps as a currency. The problem with them is that as far as we know, they don't have a military force that's capable of enforcing the bottle cap's value if some other organization manages to flood the market with recently made bottle caps from a pre-war press. While New Vegas shows an instance where the courier is tasked to go destroy a bottle cap press, it seems unlikely that merchants have made it to some of the Nuka Cola bottling plants that we see in Fallout 3 and Fallout 4's Nuka World DLC. Ultimately, I think using bottle caps as currency seems like a bad idea. The fact is, is that the technology to reproduce them does exist out on the west coast, and it also probably exists on the east coast as well. While we haven't specifically seen a bottle cap press in Fallout 3 or Fallout 4, it seems unlikely to me that a real pre-war bottle cap press wouldn't be around during that time period. I guess on the one hand, Fallout 3 and 4 are just video games, but at the same time, they would benefit from explaining some of this stuff. Especially when you consider that New Vegas does have some explanation as to why bottle caps are being used, which is essentially because NCR dollars at the time are considered to be fiat currency and are only backed by the faith of the NCR. Since many in the Mojave don't have faith in the NCR, they ultimately choose to deal in bottle caps since it is at least backed by water. 
In the case of the Legion's Denarius currency, the coins used are actually made out of gold and silver, both of which are valuable in the post-apocalyptic wasteland. Maybe Fallout 5, or whatever the next Fallout spin-off game is, will explain a lot of this better. Until then, it seems like bottle caps are fairly impractical to use. Alright guys, that's gonna pretty much wrap up this particular video. I wanna know, what do you guys think of bottle caps? Do you think I'm crazy what I'm saying here, or do you sort of agree with what I'm saying here and you see where I'm coming from? Let me know in the comments, but as always, like this video if you liked it, and take care, and I'll see you all next time.